Welcome to your weekly program, Bilahdan, the show that think we didn't get a, a headline after the Boston Marathon bombing through about 80% of the newspaper I checked. I checked the headlines, and they all have the headline, we got him. The man is condemned before even we have a due process, before we even we have a trial. We got him, and a picture of the young man, and the other one is dead, the other one we got him, he can't talk, we got him. Of course, they have a subtitle or a subcaption saying the suspect, but for all American, the million people who read this newspaper the second day, this man is condemned. So let me just go through some of the headlines uh, that uh, the, Huffington, the Huffington Post uh, put about 67 headlines uh, uh, you know, right after uh, he was captured. So, and, uh, and I found out, like the Newsday, we got him in a picture. 9,000 9, uh, uh, police were after this guy. New York Post, uh, the second bomber bagged. You know, you know, New York Post, a trashy headline. Uh, the Daily News, got him. The second buster bomber, nabbed. Uh, the, uh, the Oklahoma, we got him. Time Reporter, end game. Uh, the Columbus Dispatch, uh, Boston Rejoice. Uh, the search is done, uh, got him. The Gallery Sons, dead. Uh, journal, uh, the world's don't, uh, we got him. It's everything, got him picture, uh, and, and a picture of the, uh, the suspect. Uh, the citizen voices, Boston Strong, uh, Pittsburgh Tribu Tribune, cut, picture of the cr crowd celebrating, people uh, uh, giving high five to policemen. Only in America when the policemen have been treated as celebrity. I mean, in, in Arab Spring, uh, spring uh, <laughs> the policemen were uh, chasing uh, out of the street. Uh, Chicago Sun, even the Chicago Sun, same headline, we got him. And I, I can imagine about 85% of the newspaper, I can imagine that the newsroom and the, uh, the meeting and uh, uh, the editors sitting together and say, what are we going to have today? What would be the headline? How could they agree on just one condemning headline? It's beyond me. But that's behind the case. Uh, I know it's very hot and sensitive. We're, and, uh, you know, it's still a terrorist act, and uh, another terrorist act uh, or another explosion was in Texas that caused more damage, and we still don't know. We got him. We don't, we don't know what happened to that uh, chemical uh, plant and what happened there, uh, but uh, it, it seems like corporate America, they always get a pass. Uh, let's talk about uh, our guest today. You know, I, I, one of, a old friend of mine, I... I, I been watching his blog, his, his activists, his, uh, he, you know, he's uh, uh, one of uh, the people who really read things and, uh, and, 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 and kind of analyze things. Uh, we, we have Tommy Johnson, he is a blogger uh, from, from a Minnesota Progressive Project, and he has his website there, you can check it out on, on, on the screen. But I got an email from him, uh, on, uh, 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 you know, when you have a closing in it, an email when you say if you want to unscribe, this is confidential, don't share with anyone. But, but his email, uh, his, uh, his post to Norris was very interesting. Uh, that, uh, that I think I'm going to, you know, uh, it's talked about the security that we've gone through it post 9-11 uh, uh, in the Patriot Act. And I'm going to let him, uh, you know, read a little bit uh, uh, of that notice and, and see how did he come of this. What are his fears post 9-11 and post Patriot Act? Welcome to Al Ahdan first, uh, Tommy. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks for having thank me you, back. Thank you. Uh, I wasn't sure after the first time you had me no, on no. if I'd get Our it. rating is still intact and it <laughs> improved a lot. Uh, but uh, this is very disturbing notes, uh, notice that you have there uh, you know, uh, in your email. Tell us a little bit. Could you read us a little bit about it? And we're going to put it on the screen there. Uh, t t just read it for, uh, for us, and then we'll talk about it. Well, I'd be happy to. And this is the second version. We'll go over the first okay. version first. Okay. Uh, it's, it says notice, and it's in bold, and it's an underlined, and it says, due to policy instituted during the Bush administration, the National Security Agency, NSA, of the United States may have read this email without warning, warrant, nor notice, nor legislative or judicial oversight. 
you may not review the secret file so derived nor challenge actions resulting from it. The U.S. President, through the use of signing statements, further reserves the right to circumvent any legislation restricting this exercise of executive authority or assigning executive accountability. For this reason, the owner of this email account cannot ensure the privacy of this communication. Okay, when, I, when I'm reading this, when, when the people who send, you send them this uh, email, when they read this, what do you expect them to react? What do you want them to think about? Well, I'd like them to think about privacy and about liberty, because this is America, the land of liberty and justice for all. I heard that before. Uh, I, I do want to comment something about what you were saying in your, your oversight. I agree, there was a rush to judgment on that Boston bomber that was just abhorrent. As, I mean, in, this is America. You're presumed innocent until proven guilty. He was even the nationality was Saudi. The, oh, I think yeah. the New York Post really blew it. Well, they the said problem, 12 are dead, the, the Saudis, the, nationality. The problem what they did, what the media did on that, is they opened up a line of new uh, Arab bashing. And that's, we don't need Arab bashing in this country. We don't need bashing of anybody. And it was almost like guilt by association for all of, of my fellow Arab Americans. And let's remember one thing. Everybody here came from somewhere. My father got off a boat from Sweden, my grandfather, when he was 16 years old and didn't speak a word of English. But, but he was he a Swedish-American. He came here and, and he built himself a better life, and here I am. I mean, this is a nation... This is the promise that America gave every immigrant. I, we agree with that. Happiness, huh? and so the Boston bombing and what happened there... And I really like your point about the explosion in Texas. I mean, hundreds of people, well over 100 people died, uh, buildings were destroyed, lives were ruined. It's corporate America, and there is no accountability to those people. I hope they are, uh, you know, prosecuting this and uh, looking into it and see if, uh, what, what is this. I mean, this company what been, has been violating OSHA and violating uh, safety procedure for a long, long time. I think for me, this is corporate terrorism. It is. I agree. And that's one of the reasons why I, I did this, because you know, people like you and me and, and the people that are watching this, you know, your loyal viewership. Four of them, <laughs> for sure. Well, my wife watches. Oh, thank you. Scary stuff. We got stuff. five. That's a scary it stuff. It is scary stuff. Yeah. And that's what happened, because after 911, uh, the Bush administration went on, and they were wiretapping everybody. And uh, he, he invoked executive privilege, and everybody just gave him a blank pass. What was it. the legal uh, rationale uh, that gives uh, our government the right to wiretap people? And, uh, and I, I've read something about that actually there is. Uh, a legal uh, framework. Well, there is, of course, but this is the same type of legal minds that said waterboarding is legal. Mm -hmm. That Guantanamo, this indefinite um, detention is legal. That the extraordinary rendition where they kidnap people in Rome and turn them over to Egypt, to Egypt <laughs> is legal. So they say it's legal, but I have a real problem with it. Now, what happened when Bush was president was this was going on, and some people remember that Amy Klobuchar was running for Senate, and she was saying, I'm a former prosecutor, send me to Washington, and I'm going to help take these people to account. The first important vote Amy Klobuchar took was to give the telecommunications uh, companies, AT&T and Verizon, retroactive immunity. Retroactive. To, retroactive. Her very first And this vote. is a, one of the good ones. This is one of the good ones. And, it, and it's amazing. And Bush, I mean, Obama himself came when uh, he promised us he's going to look into a rendition and stop it. And it's still going. I, he look, promised he was going to look into a lot of stuff, and yeah, it's still exactly. going on. Exactly. So, so once you get in the system... I, I just have, I want to make this point, though, because the idea that a former prosecutor I would guess. vote to give retroactive immunity is really appalling, but again, it shouldn't surprise us because these are corporations that got this mm -hmm. retroactive immunity, and these days in America, you know, the corporations rule. So, so that's, you know, that's, that's how you... That's one of these, and I didn't write it. Um, I was at a, a political convention, and uh, I, I forget the guy's name, 
Uh, Good. He was doing. He was using this, and I did it in his really? memory. Really, his now. email or in his. Uh, in that yeah, he did it on his event. email, and I, I saw it, and I, and I read that, and I. He doesn't copyright this. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. Co no, actually, uh, he's encouraging they, people. encouraging people yeah, to of do course, it to everybody. remind people that and, you know this is about freedom. I, I think uh, it's creeping in gradually, and it's somehow the American people, given our politicians, our government. Uh, uh, you know, a free pass uh, to do this stuff because I think deep inside the American feel this is not going to apply on me. It's going to be applied on the Arabs. It's going to be applied on the Muslims. It's going to be applied on the others. But eventually it's going to be applied on them. Everybody I, is going to be uh, hurt or going to be, uh, you know, under this kind of uh, uh, legal activity. Sooner or later, yeah. when it starts happening, I. I'm a big supporter of, of gay rights, and one of the reasons, I'm not gay, and I'm obviously not a lesbian, but people ask me, well, we don't why, know why are you supportive of that? Well, I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> anyway, why are you supportive of it? Well, because the idea is, is that when you can legally discriminate against one class of citizens, how soon till they can discriminate against you? And that's why, bringing it back to where we were, exactly, with yeah. the, when, when you start uh, scapegoating in uh, Muslims and Arabs like they did it in the Boston bombing. What How is soon, it? when do they start scapegoating me? Because once you start going down that slope where it's okay to scare, it's just once, a matter of time. Once you start bombing the Scandinavian. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what is about the American historically uh, that they, they're always blaming a group, not always, but I, I you know, there is always a, uh, you know, a group that picked on. And then, you know, from start from the German, the, the Jew, the Italian, the Japanese, uh, now the Muslim, the Arabs, somehow, uh, you know, there is in the American psyche and American psychological landscape that they need an easy explanation for, for, uh, for the problem they are facing. They never connect between what their empire is doing abroad, their militaristic expansion and invasion and bombing and killing and all that, with the, what, what's going on. I mean, unless the Americans realize that terrorism is a reaction to what our foreign policy is, uh, they're not going to get it. They always get the, they're going to get the wrong, uh, uh, the wrong uh, logic and the wrong explanation. I agree with that. I think I it is a reaction. It's not a proactive that people will do it because they hate us. That's just BS. I, I agree. Um, it, you look at, at Iran, for example. Um, when the, the students took over the American embassy in 1979, uh, people said, well, they declared war on us. Uh -huh. Well, what people don't realize, and I'm sure you do because you're a student of history, is that in the, the 1954, I believe it, 1953, uh, Iran had a democratically uh, elected president. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things he ran on was nationalizing the oil industry because oil is big in Iran. No, you can't do that. So they can't do that. You can't so have what, your what, own what, oil. What, what happened? The CIA staged a coup and put the Shah in power and in more. the 19. And the Shah was one of the most brutal dictators the world has ever seen. Nobody heard about it here. They didn't. All they saw was pictures of these students. Modern, modern life. In 1979. Well, they don't realize that started because of the CIA coup in 1954. That set the stage of what happened 20 some odd years later. Can, can you have a, a functioning democracy when you have a populist or a population that uh, light knowledge is gullible, they're not interested in, in politics, they spend about five minutes a, mo a week uh, on politics, five minutes. I mean, you spend about eight hours watching television news every day and you spend five minutes a week on politics. So you really don't know much. So can you have a functioning democracy when the, you know, the populations just go vote once every four years and they're not really into tune in as long as they are shopping and things are happening and they have the iPod, the iPhone, the Iraq, Iran, all that kind of things. Can you do that? Well, I, I, I've heard it. This is an original that democracy is a horrible form of government, but the others are all worse. Yes, we heard that before. <laughs> because, because how do you have a functioning form? 
in of, of democracy when you do have voters that are so ill-informed. And one of the reasons is, is the prevalence of advertising in politics. Mm -hmm. see, because yeah. it really, to, to politicians, it doesn't matter if the policy is any good or not. The only thing that matters is that the voter thinks it's good. Package it well. And that's why they come up with things like the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. Well, the Patriot Act is why I came up with this thing that originally caused you to... The Patriot Act is anything but a Patriot Act. It's, it's legalized eavesdropping and warrantless wiretapping on otherwise law-abiding citizens. And this is not, uh, you know, it's nothing new. This is, I, I mean, government when, you know, will abuse, will try to abuse. You know, when you have power, you try to abuse it. But what are the check and balance? What are they? This is a problem when, 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 when we need our civil liberty, when we need our uh, freedom and all the things that uh, our constitutions give us. It all wiped out when there is a crisis, when we need it the most. It goes away. We, yes. beco we become. Look at the newspaper. They all become patriarchs, not journalists. They're patriotic. Got him. Got him. Get him. It's a nationalist. It's a Saudi nationalist. I mean, uh, is this uh, how our you know six uh, institution or six executive uh, that they're supposed to monitor uh, what the government is doing? Then uh, become part of it. They're telling the same story that the government is telling. They're telling the story of the people in power. Yes, and, and, and it's the same thing as the run-up to the war in Iraq. Is in, in Boston are being the mouthpieces, the media is being the mouthpieces yeah, of what the, 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 the authorities are telling them. In the run-up to Iraq, the media was just a mouthpiece for the Bush administration. There were no weapons of destruction. Even the New York Times, the Ayatollah of uh, newspaper, they fall into the same pattern. When we, when we need somebody to, to tell the story of the... Of the People in power, you know, there's no no one is uh, immune to that. You know, it's just everybody becomes a, a patriot Americans. Well, one of the problems is, is the, the way that consolidation has occurred in yes, the media. Good point. You know, uh, 30 years ago, if you owned a, a radio station, you could not own a television yes, station. Yeah, if you totally. owned a television station, you couldn't That's own a newspaper. Yeah, it's. There, there's a company called Clear Channel Communications. Oh my if you go down the radio, percent of the they, radio. Own, they own them all. Um, I, the newspapers, you know, it's the Minneapolis Star Tribune. The owners are not in Minneapolis. Uh, the, the Duluth newspaper is their owners are not in. Even there, there's a consolidation so that there's a few people that are making the decisions that go out. It, I just read a story the other day that the Koch brothers uh, want to oh, buy the Los Angeles Times. There we go. Well, Koch brothers, I mean, that's corporate America, that's petroleum, that's pipelines. It's, you know, why do they want to buy that newspaper? Not to make money, they want to buy that newspaper so it tells the story that, that protects no the Koch brothers' political or, or business interests. There is no investigative reporting anymore because uh, run by Cobra. Uh, we have only one minute here. Could, what do you think of the presidential, uh, I mean, uh, Bush Library's uh, event? What, okay. what Bush is still saying? <laughs> Very quick, the, the man who was crying, give him a break, come on. The, the Bush Lie Berry, L I E B U R Y. The Bush Library is where truth goes to die. Thank you so much. On that note, we'll, we'll finish on that. Thank you to Tommy Johnson, a blogger, a Minnesota progressive, which they are, you know, there are not that many these days, so we appreciate you coming here. We have here a, a piece about uh, our interview, Egyptian American reaction to a film was about Egypt about an event took place in 1968, right after the 67 war, where the most of the Egyptians were looking for a miracle. Here it comes, people claim that they've seen the Virgin Mary on the top of a church, and hundreds of thousands, thousands of people went on rush uh, to see the uh, Virgin Mary, and uh, uh, the producer went, uh, a French Egyptian uh, young man went to document this in, 19, in 2010, and see how people remember this uh, incident. So watch that with us. We'll see you next week. Salam alaikum and God bless you all. St. Anthony, Maine, well, we just saw that film about the Virgin, the Copta, and me for 
Neymar uh, Abdel Masih. It was a wonderful documentary about this uh, young man. He was raised in France, born in Egypt, that he decided in 20, uh, 2010 to go and do a documentary about the appreciation of, uh, of the Virgin Mary in Zaytun in 1968. How people remember this, uh, this event and try to uh, kind of test the relationship between uh, image and belief and, uh, and how uh, the appearance affects uh, people's beliefs. Uh, with a few people show up and we're gonna uh, talk to some of them uh, about uh, what they think of the film. And uh, with Cat Moon here at St. Anthony Main Theater. The cabbie uh, that put it was a muscle almost done yeah. And uh, the film showed why, in spite of the hardship the people go through and uh, uh, the, the apparent uh, very good, very good case not to like Egypt. First of all, I was seven years old, <laughs> but it did bring the the spirit of Egyptians, um, especially the villagers, which is which is really good. I heard about it, and uh, I know that the, everybody was excited about it. Uh, Muslims uh, more because there are more of them there, <laughs> and they know that uh, people uh, would go there with uh, some health problem or chi sick child, and they would hope. And it, it was, uh, you know, a big occasion. I remember uh, they telling me the police was. Uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of controlling the area, and many people come, even Muslims and Egyptians, and, and they start with uh, saying hymns and uh, make their voice louder and louder, and then uh, all of a sudden, like some nights, the Virgin Mary appears like maybe three in the morning. How do Muslims uh, remember this story and how they react? You were there in Egypt in the uh, six years. Logically and emotionally speaking, it was immediately after the what they call it, Naxib Sabah Sittim, or the setback of 67 a war between Egypt and, and Israeli. At that time, Egyptians were looking for uh, a spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Six day war left the, the country really disheartened and dispirited. And uh, I guess uh, something like this was uh, rather uplifting. Egypt, uh, we don't talk about each other's religion more, uh, much. We don't ask questions. You have your religion, I have my religion. <laughs> it's nice to see real people on the screen rather than the Hollywood I made see. up. Yeah. Of all, of, yeah, all these actors. Yeah. These people are, were just there. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. In fact, it was a very tender story. Same when the mother, yeah. which was, uh, I really enjoyed watching her. I think yeah. she's really the one who made the movie. Yeah, she saved the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when she talked about how uh, People see different things. Yeah. And if you are looking for to see a very clear picture of Virgin Mary, you will see it. If you're not, you're not. So. Well, thank you so much. Uh, his wife, his mother's conversion to supporting him was yeah. not clear. It was not yeah. real yeah. clear how that happened. Yeah. Except that he needed her money. Yeah, he saved his, his son. <laughs> the issue of, of religion, being uh, Egyptian Coptic or, or Muslim, it is not of a big deal to talk about. Mm -hmm. Faith is to love your neighbors yourself. What a concept. <laughs> yeah. And fortunately, the concept is pervasive, it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. We heard about it was in uh, the, the region of Zaytun, Kalisa Bahadara. And I, I wanted to know from them directly, first hand knowledge to tell me about it. And they shared with me their feeling and their belief and uh, having a miracle of, of such a thing. Uh, it doesn't fit with my historical understanding of a real person, Jesus, uh, who lived, but whose message did not seem to be focused on that, even though we have the story of the healing of Lazarus and so on. Mary, the version from the Islamic perspective, we Muslims believe in her as Mary, the virgin, the mother of Jesus, uh, uh, 
the Prophet and Messenger was born miraculously has been stated clearly in one of the chapters of the Quran, even the chapter itself, chapter 19, has the title of Mary. A friend of mine here, she's American, her name is Pearl Zaki, and uh, she made a trip to Egypt, uh, just especially to see, and she actually saw the Virgin Mary. And uh, she wrote a book about it. Really? She, yeah. she really believes she saw it? Oh, yeah, she did. She did. And she wrote a book about it. And uh, she gave me a copy of that book. So. Those people want to believe in something. What's your role? You deliver that or you question that? A sense of how pervasive the Virgin Mary phenomenon is for people and apparitions and visions and being having dreams that you believe are real. Um, that's not part of the Lutheran tradition. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys feel, uh, believe about? Uh, about what? About oh, the Virgin Mary. Oh, well, that's more recently she gets more press in Lutheran churches and Protestant churches. Yeah. She didn't back 50 years ago when I was ordained. This was after um, Nixon visited Egypt. Oh, I see. And uh, the Americans were Everybody really excited. welcome and had the red carpet treatment. Yeah. Everybody's going to be rich and <laughs> yeah, right. with a house and a car, <laughs> as according to Sadat. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, euphoria yeah. at this time. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs>